I don't know what I'm laughing about. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show called- Hey, Daniel, can you shut the door up there? Can you shut the door, please? I can hear the 3D printer. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show called Joey Answers Your Questions, the show. And in this episode, we're answering your questions. You know, that's quite the surprise, really. Kind of hit you with a curveball, a little change up. Bricky's number one fan says, have you ever quit something like a personal project then tried doing it again a long time later? Were you successful? Yeah, my main channel, I did that a lot. I quit that personal project all the time. One time I didn't upload a video for three months. I think maybe even longer than that at one point. But I kept on coming back to it in the hopes that it would eventually take off and I eventually was successful. Yeah, baby! So that's sort of the most concrete example of something in my life where I just kept on uploading. I didn't stop. Sometimes I would stop for a while, but I didn't stop altogether and the compound effect eventually kind of kicked in and I saw some success. I tried to improve with every single video. I tried to update my topics to be more relevant, tried new things with thumbnails. I just tried something that improved the video with each video um, and I eventually saw success. So whatever your personal project is, try not to quit altogether. You know, tr keep on trying to chip away at it, try to improve, maybe change your approach and uh, yeah, hopefully you'll see some success. It's not a guarantee. I'd, obviously, there's some luck and some some uh, blessings from above on that. But yeah, that was definitely uh, something that I don't regret quitting. Mark Boyer says, question, what is your favorite movie scene and why? Favorite movie scene, damn. That's a tough one. I don't know, there's so many scenes that I can think of that are just absolute classics. I love in Lord of the Rings, I love the Gondor calls for aid. Gondor calls for aid. And Rohan will answer. Or, my friends, you bow to no one. That always makes me like actually cry. Um, we have uh, the scene in Goodfellas. Um, funny how. Funny how. That scene's unreal. There's too many to name, man. I just, I love movies so much. Anjali Mystery says, what do you want to be remembered for? In other words, what impact do you want to leave on the world? Love your content, thanks for being a YouTuber. Well, thank you. I don't really th think about that, really. I don't know, I just kind of take it day by day. I don't really think about like, what impact I'm gonna leave on the world, really, because I feel like people are just gonna forget about me at some point, so, <laughs> you know. I'm more concerned about doing a good job in the here and now, day by day, and just kind of going about my duty in the best way possible. Um, and if people forget about me in the decades after I die, you know, that happens. That happens to like 99.999% of the population. So yeah, I don't really care to be honest. Hopefully I, I made a good impact while I was here, but I don't really care about my name standing the test of time because I'll be dead. <laughs> Hyper Deluxe says, what do you do if you feel like you're unintentionally being a manipulative person? I don't want to hurt my loved ones, but sometimes I find that my behavior is kind of toxic slash manipulative. I find that being toxic and manip manipulative, I find that being toxic and manipulative um, can happen to everybody. And a lot of the time it happens because there is some underlying unaddressed communication that needs to happen and the fact that you haven't had that dialogue will often like manifest itself into other areas or other you know seemingly normal conversations that should be normal you know say your your husband is smoking or something and you hate that but you're too afraid to bring it up then if that's the case you might harbor resentment about the smoking thing and that will lash out in different, you know, completely okay areas. Like if he comes home from work and he sits down and watches TV for like, you know, 20 minutes or something, you might be like, why are you on the TV? But you're really just mad about the smoking thing that you're too afraid to bring up. I think you can get where I'm uh, coming from. Try to analyze whether there's some issue or point of contention that's a lot deeper or more important that is being unaddressed and try to have the courage to address that thing. Otherwise, that uh, disagreement 
or that point of contention will just leak into every other interaction you have with that person. Try to really reflect on why you're being so um, toxic, really, and try to live your life truthfully and try to address things that need to be addressed. Be willing to have a short-term quarrel for hopefully long-term peace. Tegan says, question, do you live alone? If so, any tips? Are you scared of ghosts? I don't live alone. I live with my brother and my friend uh, in this house. And uh, any tips for living alone? Yeah, try to get out of the house as much as possible. It's not good to just kind of like lock yourself inside all the time. I know there's a pandemic going on, but there's ways to leave your house in a safe way. And I would highly recommend doing so. Otherwise, you're going to kind of go stir crazy and cuckoo inside your uh, little tower, like Rapunzel. And try to just like, you know, not create an echo chamber inside your own head. Always try to be interacting with other people. Otherwise, yeah, you're just gonna develop some pretty strange ideas and hopefully, hopefully not some like negative feedback loops. So yeah, when you're living alone, it's really important to leave, uh, leave the isolation either mentally or physically. And am I afraid of ghosts? Yeah, just straight up terrified of them. Mac Gabriel 100 says, oh wow, he actually followed through with his weekly schedule. That was unexpected. Oh, thanks for the uh, very um, encouraging words there. Anyways, what's your breakfast routine or do you even have one at all? <laughs> okay, I'm not even answering that. What the hell? Um, actually, I, I misinterpreted that. Or do you even have one at all? You know, I'm not gonna assume this person is like passive aggressive. This isn't really a health related question. I'm just curious. Okay, I'll answer, I'll answer your question. Breakfast routine. Yeah, six eggs. Oh, I'm roughly the size of I'll, I'll wake up, I'll have my coffee, I'll have my athletic greens shake, and then I'll have six eggs. That's, uh, that's my breakfast routine. Henry G says, how much do you bench? You're a big guy. Thank you. Back before I messed up my shoulder, I was 225 and I plateaued there and I couldn't bench more than 225. And then I messed up my shoulder. Now I can't bench anything. I just don't bench anymore. I can do incline a little bit. So I'm trying to work my way up on that. I can probably do like 200 incline, but um, yeah, it's still my shoulders a really iffy situation. You can probably tell in this video that my the shoulder droops lower than the other one. Danny Hatcher says, ah, I asked in a previous video if you were going to do any live streaming. I mentioned your stream with Gotham Chess last video, but would watch you on Twitch if you start. I want to do more live streaming. Getting this uh, series locked in is a priority for me right now getting some consistency in the main channel is a priority for me, but I do really like going live. It's really fun. I like the uh, the spontaneity of it. I like how I can just kind of go live all of a sudden without any warning and see who shows up. You can do kind of fun things while you're live. Yeah, I don't know if I'll schedule a live stream time. Uh, this year. I don't know if, if I started a Twitch channel, if there would be any success there, or if that's even like a good use of my time, to be honest, um, at least at this point in my career, I feel like it's more, it's better use of my time to like dedicate some, you know, a few hours every day to work on a course that I'm developing right now. So yeah, I've been playing chess at, like every single day though. So maybe I'll live stream some more of that. If you guys are interested, Yvonne says, Hey Joey, what are your favorite movies and why? Okay, I kind of answered this a little bit, but uh, probably like, yeah, man, I don't know. I really like Goodfellas. I really liked. Uh, I really like Fight Club. I really like. Um, I think District Nine is woefully underrated. Um, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, classic Nolan, Dark Knight, Inception kind of thing. I just blanked. I, that was, I wasn't even thinking. I was just like looking at my chess set that I have right there. Yeah, man, there's so many movies. Uh, if we're talking like, I'd have to go by genre and name a few of my favorites in each genre. Uh, if we're talking rom-coms, I think Crazy Stupid Love is like super funny and it's a classic. It has an awesome amount of replay value. I've watched that movie maybe five times. If we're talking about like cheesier movies that aren't like necessarily film, but are 
you know, kind of guilty pleasures. I really liked uh, Limitless with Bradley Cooper. Yeah, there's so many. There are so many movies. Ahad Imran says, Hey Joey, there was something that was plaguing my mind and that is the idea of accepting reality, which is an issue with which I have been fighting my entire life. I always find myself living in my own world of fantasy and delusion at moments where I am just too weak to accept reality and when I try to, I can't handle the rationality of life. This aspect of my life is severely damaging. I was wondering if you have ever come across times like these, and what was your advice for the ones living life with this state of mind? Keep up the good work, take care. So it sounds like you're using this fantasy world to escape from a reality, and it seems like reality isn't a place that you generally like being in a lot of circumstances. And I don't know your situation, but it might mean that you have a lot of negative emotions attached to many different things in your life. One of the only choices you have um, is like, if you, if you tend to be someone who escapes from reality all the time, then it should be your main priority to try to create a reality that you no longer want to escape from. Obviously that is easier said than done, but it is possible. And one tool that you might have at your disposal uh, that you might want to consider is doing EMDR therapy. And I'm, I'm not, not a doctor, doctor. I'm, I'm just, just a dude. dude, so I'm not you know, qualified to prescribe you anything. Don't listen to my advice without you know, talking with a professional. But I have heard a lot of people have success with EMDR if they have strong negative emotions attached to particular real world events or situations and they are strongly interested in reprogramming those negative responses uh, so that they can better deal with those things in real life without having such a strong need to like cower away and escape right so emdr therapy it stands for eye movement desensitization uh, reprogramming, I think. It plays off of the weird phenomenon that when you, you know when you like recall events, when you're thinking of something, which I do all the time, I, I think of stuff all the time. Uh, no, but I like, I like look away from the camera when I'm thinking about stuff. Everyone does this. They're like trying to recall a memory, so they're looking up in the corner. Or if they're lying, they look in a different corner. Thinking about something traumatizing, they'll look somewhere else, or they'll like, their eyes will move back and forth like this you know, thinking about the trauma. And there's a reason for that. It's like, it's because your eye movement plays an integral role in like in memory and, and recall and stuff like that. So what EMDR therapy does is, you know, the therapist will be there directing your eye movements as you're recalling a memory. And as you're moving your eyes from like left to right in like more of a relaxed way or something like that, as you're bringing up these memories, it's actually easier to dive into them. So you can work with your therapist to sort of like desensitize yourself or reprogram, um, you know, your response to these memories. Um, and it's like fascinating stuff, you know, it's becoming more and more popular. So it might be something you want to look into if you feel like, you know, the, the emotions of your negative situation are, are just is just so overwhelming that you can't really you know you don't have solid ground to work with um but yeah try to work day and night to create a reality you no longer want to escape from because it is possible and you can do it calvin lee says how did you deal with going bald who says i did my hair is thinning and quite receded so i might want to bite the bullet within a year or so would love some advice how to cope with looking so drastically different. I feel ya. You have two options, basically. You can either shave your head, like bick it, like I just, that I've started doing. I'm just like literally taking a razor and bicking my head, which I think is a better look. It's a lot cleaner. Or you can kind of ease into it. You can uh, take like an electric razor and put like a one guard on it, or even like a two and kind of you know, make your hair really, really short, which is sometimes, you know, that's what I started doing when I first shaved my head. Um, and it's sort of like a little bit mentally easier to kind of dive into, but ultimately you really just have to say like, fuck it and shave your head. You know, like it's sort of like getting into a cold shower. You kind of have to dive straight in. Um, I would recommend just like honestly bicking your head because you'll feel pretty badass about it. You kind of just have to hold your breath say like screw it and the other thing is like no one really gives a shit they'll be like oh you shaved your head like the first time they see you 
Um, and then you'll be like, yeah, I shaved my head. Uh, and then that'll be it. The next time they see you, they'll have adjusted already. You know, it's it's not a big deal. No one really cares. Patrick Rob Robluski. Ro yeah, Robluski. In a world where humans' nature is to progress and better life itself, do you believe that this betterment could create opportunities to be both more unhappy and happy? Um, do you believe that there's a limit to which humans can no longer improve life? Lastly, do you believe that there are other life forms that traverse our supposed infinite universe, both human-like and not? Yeah, where do we even begin? I feel like in a lot of ways, humanity has progressed to a point where it's almost regression, like technology has gotten so good that it's made us as humans weak. A good example of that is social media, I think. It's so easy to connect with literally everybody across the globe. Touch. Don't touch. Uh, but it's also kind of made to be addicting. I have to touch you! Hey! And people are you know, almost developing ADHD because of social media in a way. And uh, people can't get off their phones. They can't connect with the people in front of them. Um, their attention spans are diminishing year by year. And, you know, the large tech companies are just profiting from it. They're profiting from our attention because we're the product. We're not the customer because customers pay. So third party advertisers are the customers to social media companies and we're the product. So in a way it's like technology advanced, but to our detriment. And a lot of the time adding more comfort into your life makes you a weaker person. It makes you like soft. <laughs> so I feel like in a way times can and are getting so good that we as human beings are actually getting worse and weaker. Um, and so I feel like you you need the strenuous life. That's why people are going to the gym. That's why, that's why like you have to go to the gym and exercise because it's like inviting more strain into your life and it's good for you. Like you need to struggle. Um, otherwise you'll just atrophy. Atrophy? I like atrophy. Hell yeah. Yeah. And as for aliens, yeah, I don't know, dude, <laughs> probably who's to say I'm open to it but I feel like they would have contacted us by now, you know? Yeah, maybe there's some like Martian worms or something. Hello, sea creatures! Some bacteria somewhere on like Jupiter, who knows? Jose Ruiz says, is this question gonna be in the next episode? No. Arjun uh, Kemani says, Arjun? I don't know. Hi Joey, are you friends with Matt Diavella and are you a minimalist? Uh, I am friends with Matt Diavella and I'm not a minimalist, per se, strictly, but I understand the draw and I try to invite elements of minimalism into my life. I like the idea of like better stuff instead of more stuff. You know, I've kind of subscribed to that philosophy for a while. Like buy a good pair of boots that you really like, but get rid of your old boots, you know, give them away or, or sell them or something, um, you know, like a camera. I don't need 16 cameras around. I should upgrade my camera when it makes sense, but I should also get rid of my old camera. Try to keep the amount of things that you own to a minimum, and I find that your mental clarity and the amount of things you have to worry about is diminished. No, your mental clarity is increased, but the amount of things you have to worry about is diminished. I really like that philosophy, better stuff, not more stuff. Um, but at the same time, sometimes you just don't need better stuff. You know, you don't need the upgrade. If whatever's working for you uh, is working right now, then don't think about it, you know, try to improve yourself rather than your stuff. So you know what's funny about me filming this video right now is that I was sitting here to film my main channel video, but I couldn't think of the right words. So I said, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna do like my second channel video just to like get me in the flow of things, to get me talking, get me all loose. Uh, I think it's working, but right after I stop recording this, I'm gonna dive right into my main channel video uh, and yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I can get the right wording. Oh my goodness, Ari. I'm sorry, I can't do your last name. Wojciech. What kind of project would it take you to get? What kind of project would it take to get you to step away from both channels for an extended period of time? Ooh, that's a good question. I feel like if a master filmmaker needed my services, 
Like, if I had the opportunity to work with Martin Scorsese or Denis Villeneuve or Christopher Nolan, I'd be like, sorry, YouTube, I gotta go. See you, chump. And I'd work with them, I'd run coffee, I'd shine their shoes. I'll go home and get your f shine box. I would I'd try to absorb as much information from them as possible because I ideally do want to be directing movies or being a director of photography or something uh, that just, that excites me so much. But hopefully I can make like, like videos on the side or something. New Noon says your top three favorite video games. Keep up the good work, man. Um, Top three favorite video games? I don't know. Halo 3, Skyrim, Age of Empires 2. There are three that are probably in the top five, but anyways. AJ Santos says, this might be a bit personal, but do you have normal anxiety or do you have generalized anxiety disorder like me? Love your crafts, keep up the good work. I don't know. I definitely have anxiety, but it comes in waves. Like my anxiety has been very minimal over the past couple of months. But I would say like, at some point last year, it was pretty bad for like a month or two. Um, and it, I feel like it really depends on my lifestyle. You know, like when pandemic, when the pandemic just hit, I was getting anxiety quite a bit just because like I was inside so much and I wasn't used to it and I was on online so much. Um, and even now, like if I'm on the internet like all day and I'm just, wasting my time on YouTube and Facebook and Reddit. And I'm just like, I drain an entire day doing that. My anxiety just like ramps up and ramps up and ramps up because I'm just like injecting dopamine all day, right? So I feel like my anxiety is very lifestyle dependent. So if I'm like getting out of the house, I'm getting exercise, I'm really disciplined with my work, you know, I'm filming these videos, I'm writing lots of content, then my anxiety is very, very minimal. So I don't really know. and. I don't really think I need to know unless it becomes a problem. Yeah, I don't really know what my official diagnosis would be, but uh, it's not its not out of control or anything like that. But yeah, I mean, good luck. There's, there's things that you can do to minimize it, and I'm sure you know that, um, and I wish you luck. Kind of sucks, but uh, it's very, very common. So you'll have lots of people like you uh, that you can kind of learn from, I guess. Other than that, that's it. I'm gonna try to film this main channel video, uh, see if I can develop the right wording on things, but leave your comments down below. Ask me more questions because these questions that I just answered were the questions from the comment section of last video. So whatever you post in this comment section are the questions that I'll be answering in the next video. Catch you later. Goodbye. Yeah,